Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number eight at Saratoga on Saturday, the first of two grade one races on the card. This one for three-year-old fillies. Let's take a look at the field for the grade one test. A half million dollars is the purse. We're going seven furlongs. This is just a great race every year. Yeah. The signature sprint race for three-year-old fillies, wide open once again. Yeah, it's a very good, very good field. You know, this year it feels like even um, it's there's so many lightly raced horses in here. It, it, I I had a real tough time with this race. I don't know about you, Dan. And I listen. Maybe at the end of the day, I just um, made it a little more complicated than it actually is because the two horses on the outside, um, eight and ten, are both pretty good. I think, but. Um, I don't know, I felt like there were maybe different ways to go in here. Well, we'll begin with the number 10, American Gal, trained by Simon Callahan, and this filly hasn't run a bad race at all. She no. emerged from nowhere to become the favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillies last year, and yes, it was a weak division, but she was very impressive in her two sprints to begin her career. Yeah. She had an abysmal trip in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillies, she had an right. abysmal trip in the Grade 1 Starlet at Los Alamitos, right. and she disappeared. And when she came back in the Grade 3 Victory Ride, I said, I know this horse from somewhere, I just yeah. can't put my finger on it. She ran really well in the victory ride. Something tells me she's going to be a pretty good sprinter this yeah. year. Price might be the question. Five to two. This is a little bit of an acid test. I, it is. I think she's the horse to beat in here, though. Um, I agree. If only because I agree. Listen, the, the two grade ones going long last year, I mean, she actually ran really well in those races. Those trips were impossible. But to me, it was just she was so impressive in her first two career starts. Um, she's not trained by Bafford anymore. I don't know if that matters or not. Um, I want to get your opinion of the victory ride. I know it's a new top figure. It was off the layoff in her three-year-old debut. All the things that you want to see. First start off the layoff, first start as a three-year-old, takes a step forward and runs a 92. And I know that she stumbled at the start of that race. Um, nobody why am I not go. impressed with Only that race? Nobody. The pace wasn't fast. You know, once she stumbled at the start, sometimes that can be a real problem if you stumble at the start. It wasn't for her because they walked on the lead. They just let her get right up into the race again. And yeah, she was clear at the end. I wasn't that impressed with the way she finished the race off. I know she can go forward in here. I do think she's the horse to beat, but I don't love her in here. I, I agree that she's the horse to beat. I'd probably use her in any kind of multiple race wagers. It's just that I agree with you in that no one wanted to go in the beginning of the victory ride, and because of that vertical logo, a horse that can be forwardly placed was sort of hung out yeah, four wide all the way around the turn, and maybe she wouldn't have finished with American Gal anyway, but I think at least vertical Oak deserves another opportunity based on what we saw in a race like the Miss Preakness. And perhaps most importantly, if the weather shakes out the way it might, yeah. and we have a very wet There's track. A Vertical Oak ran a gigantic race over a wet track at Prairie Meadows. She's going to be forwardly placed in here, and she'll yeah. be a good price. Yeah, I don't I don't know what they were doing with her last time. I don't know why they didn't just send. She had the outside post, and the horse that she had to beat stumbled at the start, and they didn't even try and make the front with her in there, and she got that four-wide trip. Um, didn't run that well in there, but I, I don't know that the ride helped her all that much. The race two back, obviously, you put a line through that one, and so then you're with the two wins prior to that that are fast. And she's another one. I know that she can win. I'm just not really sold on her. The, the win at Canterbury, uh, or at Prairie Meadows in the slop, I mean, she was beating nothing in there on a wet track. And then, you know, that Miss Preakness. I mean, it's felt like a day where you had to be forward. There were only two horses forward, her and the horse that ran second, and nobody else ran. The number three, Shalon, heads our time form U.S. pace projector, although I could certainly see American Gal closer. I can certainly see the five vertical oak a little bit closer. But if you thought the pace didn't go in the victory ride. Oh and the Jersey Girl, it looks great on paper, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Big top 93 yeah. buyer speed figure. She's found her home here in New York. Just remember, the Vertical Oak was the favorite in that race, and she got held in the start, yeah. basically dumped yeah, the jockey or whatever, up. raced for purse money mo only. And then a, a Philly Shalone who can go 44 to the half if need be, goes 47 and three on an easy lead. She's supposed to look as good as she did yeah. striding home in the stretch. Now, if she gets the lead here, Sure, she could be dangerous, but she's going to stretch to seven. This one mini blip is a fast horse. Vertical Oak's going to be on top of her. It's not going to be as easy as it looks on paper for the Jersey girl. I agree with that. And, and American Gal is a fast horse from the outside. I mean, there's. I think this pace is going to be competitive, and I don't disagree that Shalone will be up there on it, but I think she's going to have more company than the pace projector thinks she, she will. And I totally agree with your take on her last race. I mean, it's visually very impressive. I mean, Paco Lopez had her under a double arm bar up the backstretch. They were walking on the lead, and then she sprinted home in there. Um, her race two back was fine. That went on the wet, fast track. She, she ran pretty well in there, took a lot of pressure, shrugged it off and won, but uh, I think it's gonna be tougher here. 
Kentucky-based trainer Al Stahl sent out some live horses at Saratoga this meet. Mini Blip has won two of three lifetime starts, handled the sloppy track most recently. Uh, got away with kind of a softish trip up front, yeah. but is going to have to deal with Shalom. I wish he wasn't down inside. Exactly. I mean, Javier has no choice but to go, right? Yeah, I think that's probably right. I, I wish he had a different post because I would probably use her even more than I might use her. Anyway, I like her races. I liked her debut a lot. And it's worth pointing out, she did not make the lead in her debut. She sat in behind horses, and once she got clear, she whistled in there, and she was good last time. I don't know what to say about her second career start. That was pretty disappointing, but it was just her second start and a sloppy sealed track. She really stepped it up again last time. She crushed that field, and you know, you watch the stretch run that race. It looks like she jumped some tracks in the stretch, but she just kept right on going after she did that. This filly's pretty good. The number two, Your Love, has some nice tactical speed. You figure the one and the three and the five are going to go. Maybe Irad will get this filly to settle in behind horses. She has run well over a wet track, has this Keeneland grad. She wants to beat you. She's two for two. She's won two photos for Chad Brown, yeah. and she beat three next out winners in her most recent start. I like this filly. I spent a lot of time trying to talk myself into her as my top pick. I wonder if this will be a little tougher. I will say I don't. I know the horses that ran second and third last time both came back to win. Um, I'm not sure how much I love that race from her, but she did get it done. I liked her debut a lot. It was a fat. That was the fast track race, and I think that probably um, is better for her. She was good in that race um, for a first time starter. It'll be interesting to see what she does in here. I couldn't talk myself into her, but I'm not going to be surprised if she turns out to be really good. Isn't this the turn back that the number four tech will yes. has been crying out for the entire spring season? Yes. She won the grade two forward gal in nice fashion at this distance at Gulfstream. And then she ran well enough in the Gulfstream Park Oaks, although you know somebody had to finish second to Salty. Yeah, and on class, it was tech -Walita. She had no chance in the Kentucky Oaks, A, from a distance and class standpoint, of course, in against divisional leader Abel Tasman. She needs some pace. You think she's going to get it. Yeah, she's going to be a price. Yeah, all those things are true, and I think she's a huge player in this race, and um, I would have made her my top pick in the race except for one thing. We haven't seen her since the Kentucky Oaks, and she was supposed to run in the acorn. Right. She was scratched from the acorn, and then she didn't work for a month after that, so it feels to me like maybe something went wrong. But listen, if she comes back and she's 100% and she can run her best race and get the setup that looks like she's going to get, she could easily win this race. Number seven, Divine Miss Gray has won four out of her last five starts. She deserves an opportunity in this graded stakes race, and she's got a hot trainer in her corner in Danny Gargan. Here's the formulator fact for Divine Miss Gray over the past three years with last out three-year-old winners on the dirt off a tiny layoff. 25% of 494 ROI. I think she's ideally posted with good yeah. tactical speed. The question is, is she good enough? Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll find out on Saturday if she's good enough. Um, it's hard to argue with what she's done for Danny Gargan, though. He's just gotten her to take a step forward every time he sends her out there, and now he's going to really test her in here. I think it's going to be too tough for her, but I won't be surprised because Gargan's horses, they're all running right now. I like the cutback for the number nine, Chanel's Legacy, who's going to be a nice price. This is going to be start number eight for her in 2017. Yeah. She has already won three stakes races, and she's now in the hands of Chad Summers, who, of course, trains one of the leading sprinters in the country, Mind Your Biscuits. Chad's been on fire himself over the past 30 days on dirt, 50% to 350 ROI. After 12 starts, the top buyer, though, only an 80. Yeah, she's a little slow on the way in. Um, and, you know, having had, you know, seven starts already this year, 12 in her life, I mean, how much faster is she going to get? I don't know if she's going to get uh, fast enough to beat this kind of a field, but you're right about the turnback. It really works for her. Speaking of turnbacks, as we take a look at our top selections for the test, the number six cursor, your top pick, 30 to 1 on the morning line, got the turnback she needed last time out. She responded with a big win. You made this horse a horse to watch on out of the gate. Uh, talk about slow. I mean, she's a little bit slow on yeah, paper, but you think this there could be a meltdown in here, and you think this filly's got a lot of ability. Yeah, I like her as a as a sprinter. I mean, like that's what she wants to do. Um, they tried to stretch her out, and it's just that's not. She doesn't want to go that far. This is a better distance for. I listen. I don't. I don't know that she's good enough to beat this field. Um, I also don't think that she's really a 74 kind of. I think she's better than that, and I think she's going to get the right setup in here. And I think she's going to come running late in this race in a field where I just. I don't know, Dan. I really struggle with it. I don't love the favorites. Um, I think one of them will probably win, but I don't love them. I'm willing to take a shot with Cursor. I'll make a little bet on her. I'll use her underneath, certainly, the more logical horses. I don't think she'll be 30 to 1 either, but she'll be a big price. You're going 6, 10, 8, and 4. I think Fapien, along with American Gal, as you mentioned, they're the horses to beat. Yeah. She's very lightly raced. I actually like this cutback from her too. from a mile and a 16th to 7. She was all hard to beat Mopatism last time. Who's a solid enough middle distance filly? That 
was a decent field in the summertime oaks. Uh, a wet track would be a, a bit of a question mark. But I also like her stalking ability. This Me is too. a good outside post for her. I think she can work out a good trip for Baffert. Unfortunately, the price isn't going to be yeah. there for her. Yeah, that was the one reason why I didn't, just didn't put her on top, because I don't think you're going to get a price on her. And I'm not so sure that American Gal just isn't better than her. But we'll find out. Um, I will say this. I like her two sprints a lot. I know she won a grade two going long last time. I like her sprints a lot better than her route race. Mike going with the price. Cursor, 6, 10, 8, and 4. I'm going with Baffert, the 8. Fapian, 8, 3, 10, 7 in the grade one test. It has an approximate post time race number eight at the spa of 5, 10 Eastern on Saturday. Best of luck.